BBOR Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia, Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about the Zodiac Killer, and I would really just like to view this upload as an opportunity to share some observations with you guys. I am fully aware that everything we're about to go through is not exactly perfect. And I also hope that maybe someone is just going to listen to some of these observations and perhaps they will be able to connect the dots or they'll be able to see something that maybe I have missed or that people have missed over the years when talking about the Zodiac Killer. Of course, the series of murders that took place from 1968 to 69 in the San Francisco Bay Area, as well as some other possible um, alleged incidents from 66 to 1970. So what I would say about the confirmed incidents in Zodiac activity is the first one is Lake Herman Road on December 20th of 1968. And for a long time, I've noticed that there is a close proximity of December 20th to the winter solstice, December 21st of 1968. And that always stood out to me. And as we begin to learn a little bit more about the Zodiac killer suspects, There was a particular suspect that stood out to me, and that was Hal Snook. He is the prime suspect in the Zodiac Killer hoax theory, but uh, some people also talk about Hal Snook as a Zodiac Killer suspect himself, meaning that he was involved with the murders. If that were the case, either way, both of them, both of them, you would have some guy who would have most likely had the assistance of an individual named Dennis Land as the stabber at Lake Berryessa, September 27th of 1969, meaning that Dennis Land would have been the assailant wearing the Zodiac Killer hood and stabbing Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard. Once again, that's on September 27th of 1969. Okay, so proximity to the winter solstice. Then... December 20th, and then the first day of winter is December 21st. For the winter season, the Zodiac did not act, did not write any letters. For the winter, the Zodiac is completely dormant. Then what happens? The spring equinox. That was on March 20th of 1969. Sometimes the... um. Sometimes the spring equinox is on the 21st, sometimes on the 20th. The internet says that it's on was on the 20th of 1969, but uh, sometimes it's the 21st. And the thing about a month is a month can be 30 or 31 days. And February, has, of course, has 28 or 29 days. So you have either one of those. And I just began to wonder if we did have somebody being involved with the Zodiac Killer mystery What is one way that people leave a signature? Well, maybe they'd commit a crime on their birthday, right? Then I thought, no way. That's too obvious. I mean, anybody would be able to recognize that if they committed a crime on their birthday, yeah, it would be a signature, but it would be such an obvious signature that no one would do something like that. Then I thought, okay, maybe someone would leave a signature by committing a crime six months away from their birthday. And then it just hit me. It's like, wait a second. I never looked up Hal Snook's birthday. And I put in his birthday, just like into Google. You can see people have you know written about this. You can do it yourself. His birthday was April 21st of 1925. He was born on April 21st, just around one month from the spring equinox. So we have the December 20th incident. In Zodiac activity, Lake Herman Road. Then during the entire winter season, the Zodiac is not acting. The Zodiac is dormant for the winter. Spring equinox, the month of rebirth. And then Hal Snook is born on April 21st, one month from the spring equinox. Thereabouts, thereabouts. And when I was typing in Hal Snook's birthday into Google, into the search engine, I knew that his birthday was going to be the 21st of some month. I just knew it. I don't know how I knew it, but I did. And I don't have any psychic powers or anything. I just had this gut feeling that Hal Snook's birthday was going to fall on the 21st of a particular month. And there you have it. His birthday was April 21st, two months before the summer solstice, of course, dealing with June 21st, the beginning of summer, right? 
during the spring, we have the birth of Hal Snook, right? Then the two-month gap is going to be very important. Because, okay, first we go two months until the summer solstice. This is when the Zodiac comes alive. This is when the Zodiac takes action. Because the first recorded incident was on July 4th, Darlene Farron passing away on July 5th of 1969. Then we have Lake Berryessa on September 27th of 1969, Paul Stein's murder in Presidio Heights on October 11th of 1969. And I just also began to notice, I've never heard anyone write this exact, write it out exactly like this, but all confirmed incidents in Zodiac activity occurred in the summer and the fall. I mean, Lake Herman Road, December 20th of 1968, close proximity to the winter solstice, but in all seriousness, December 20th, it's the day before the winter solstice. That means that it was still in the month of fall, autumn. I mean, I don't know if that's significant of anything. That's why I'm saying I hope uh, people could piece something together out of all this. But I mentioned that the that two months is a very significant time frame. Okay, because first we have Hal Snook is born April 21st. Then we go two months to the summer solstice. After the first incident in Zodiac activity on July 4th, there is a little bit more than a two-month gap. And we get Lake Berryessa, July 4th to September 27th of 1969. But what I began to think about was, what would the perpetrator at Lake Berryessa's birthday be? And this is all alleged. Dennis Land has never been confirmed to be the perpetrator at Lake Berryessa, wearing the hood, stabbing Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard. But what was his birthday? And Dennis Land passed away in 2010. You can read his obituary online. And I saw that his birthday was on August 12th. August 12th. So then you have Hal, Hal Snook is born on the 21st of April. There's a two-month gap to the summer solstice. The Zodiac comes alive. The first incident in Zodiac activity. So that's the month of June is the solstice. There's a Zodiac incident in July. Dennis Land is born in August. There is a Zodiac incident in September. And then, of course, we have the Paul Stein murder in Presidio Heights on when? October 11th. Dennis Land was born on August 12th. Of 1960, uh, Dennis Land was born on August 12th, and Paul Stein was murdered on October 11th of 1969. There's a two month gap from Dennis Land's birthday, thereabouts, you know, roughly speaking, two months to the murder of Paul Stein. And that's the final incident in confirmed zodiac activity. The relationship between Hal Snook and Dennis Land, as I understand it, was that Dennis Land was Hal Snook's protege. They met when he was teaching at Napa Valley Junior College, Hal Snook being the teacher. And then Dennis Land and Hal Snook would become hunting buddies and fishing buddies. Hal Snook also owned a sporting goods store that Dennis Land would frequent. And there is this pattern here where, once again, a murder is committed prior to the winter solstice. Two murders, really, the murders of David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen. Then the Zodiac goes dormant. Then Hal Snook is born in the spring season after the spring equinox, the the time of rebirth, then coming alive into the summer after the summer solstice, the Zodiac chose to act. Then you have, you know, all the months line up in the summer. You have June, July, August, September. And um, even in the month of September, you know, it's like it's technically in fall because it would be September 27th. But I still think that that follows the two month, um, you know, the two month uh, time gap. And I just think that Two months from Hal Snook's birthday until the summer sol- solstice. Two months from Dennis Land's birthday to the final incident in Zodiac Activity, the murder of Paul Stein in Presidio Heights. And then you would have it. Like, there you would have it. That would be the final incident. You have this man and his protege committing these murders or allowing these murders to happen. Because that's a big thing we should say. Hal Snook is primarily not a Zodiac killer suspect. He is thought to be the person who is writing the Zodiac Killer letters perpetrating the Zodiac Killer hoax, according to the Thomas Horan theory. Now, so there's some things we could say about that. How and why? Well, in 1969 was the 25th anniversary of of 1944. Hal Snook was involved with a lot of incidents 
in World War II in, in the year of 1944. And the first Zodiac letters match up 25 years to the day of Hal Snook's military service, particularly even after October 11th, the murders may have stopped. But um, November 8th and 9th were like two of the days when Hal Snook's ship in the Pacific Theater was attacked by Japanese kamikazes. Hal Snook was injured, and I believe it's November 9th when he should have received his Purple Heart, or the injury happened where he should have but he should have received a Purple Heart, but when he tried to get the physical medals, they said there's no record of you um, deserving any of these medals. We, uh, we can't really give you the physical medals. So he was very bitter about that, and he wanted to make a statement. But um, because Hal Snook worked as a Napa County deputy, because he worked in the narcotics department, there is a lot of talk of the words confidential informants. And it's possible there could be some relationship between David Faraday and a confidential informant at Lake Herman Road, or it's possible even that David Faraday could have been the confidential informant himself. When I first heard that, I thought that that was absolutely bonkers because David Faraday was like 17 years old at the time, but crazier things have happened. Okay, and Darlene Farron is also rumored to have possibly, it's possible that she was a confidential informant at Blue Rock Springs, and either these people were put in harm's way, or, you know, the situation boiled over, got out of control, or perhaps Hal Snook double-crossed them, or perhaps he sent them into a dangerous situation knowing that they were going to be, um, going to be facing the possibility of death. And when I say that he would, could have double-crossed them, well, we did our upload on Hal Snook as a Zodiac Killer suspect. He would have had every opportunity to have people show up to these places, Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs Park, at night, mind you, and blindside them. And then if, knowing that other people were going to be arriving for a possible drug deal or perhaps a possible confrontation, that would have contaminated the crime scene. We're talking about leaving footprints, boot prints, possibly even fingerprints would get left behind. Imagine if somebody were to just put their hand on the side of a car that would leave fingerprints, and then that could have also happened. But the whole point is, I really noticed a pattern. The Zodiac intentionally stayed dormant for the winter. No letters. I mean, no, not taking credit for the Lake Herman Road murders. Not sending anything. Not committing other murders. And then taking credit for them. Not any phone calls. Absolutely not. The Zodiac was dormant for the winter. And I was really trying to follow not exactly the monthly calendar, but rather the calendar of the seasons. So the winter solstice is um, recognizing that the Zodiac is trying to commit a series of murders within one cycle of the seasons. And many people want to really pull this into the occult angle, the magic angle. I don't necessarily know if we should do that right now. I think there's much rather focus just on the changes of the seasons. You got the name Zodiac. And you got the cycle going from the winter solstice into October. That's when the the uh, canonical murders have taken place, the confirmed incidents in Zodiac activity. And with that, I mean, October is very significant for a number of reasons. I mean, after Halloween, we have All Souls Day. That could be something significant. Or perhaps it really could just be that Hal Snook and his protege, the mentor and the protege, have this two-month gap in between their birthdays and incidents in Zodiac activity, as well as the uh, the cycles of the seasons. Once again, two months from Hal Snook's birthday, April 21st until, until June 21st, the summer solstice, then you would have the Zodiac coming to life. Then you could also just as easily say that his protege has a birthday on August 12th. Okay, then he is coming to life, and then this thing is all completed two months later. You have the incident at Lake Berryessa, you know, for the month of September, and then you would have October 11th of 1969 being the final planned Zodiac murder, which is two months away from Dennis Land's birthday. And one of the things, though, that you could just say about any of this is, even if, even if it wasn't designed, the changes in the season affect the way that people think. And if Hal Snook had any involvement in this, he's going to know growing up that his birthday is in between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. Obviously, right, if his birthday's April 21st. And people think about these things. And it does affect your um, 
your thinking and such. And I, earlier on, earlier this week on the channel, we were talking about like astrology and how you have to accept the initial premise that the alignment of the stars affects your temperament and such. What I think is so much more valuable to talk about is the anticipation of the seasons in relation to the date of your birth. I mean, I think that that is such a more valuable conversation to have about how that would affect your temperament and mood and such, as well as decision making. Or how about the, the basic concept of seasonal affective disorder? Seasonal affective disorder affects a lot of people. I get it most intensely um, from the changes around autumn, like summer to autumn and autumn to winter. That's what really affects me so much as opposed to um, winter to spring. Not really as much, but then spring is the month the the season of rebirth right so you have winter going cold spring coming to life the summer everything just heats up literally and metaphorically and that's when you have the bulk of the zodiac act activities i should say but really i mean i want to reinforce that point all of the zodiac murders took place in the summer and the fall I mean, the last one is the last day of autumn, December 20th. We're still in autumn. It doesn't always feel like it, but we are. And um, you really have, like, the case taking on a life of its own, especially noticing the, um, the concentrations in activity. And one of the reasons that could be supporting this is some people who do not entertain any variant of the multiple killers theory simply say the Zodiac was growing in confidence. He committed a murder. October, I'm sorry, December 20th of 1968, then seven months practically to plan the next murder. Then he has another uh, two months to plan the next one, decides to wear the hood, writes the message on the car door, showing criminal versatility. And the Paul Stein murder is actually the riskiest one, murdering a taxi driver in downtown San Francisco and then walking away. Then it's like, the Zodiac was very much aware of something like that. I mean, like, he he really showed a lot of awareness to not get caught committing that murder and just walking away, as well as just possibly being lucky. Uh, proponents of the single killer theory are much more inclined to say that the Zodiac was just growing in confidence, as well as, if you're going to look at something like the Don Chaney theory, why there are, why are there are these specific gaps in Zodiac activity? If you look at Don Chaney as a Zodiac suspect... I mean, what I learned from Drew Beeson was that Lake Herman Road happened, and then the Don Chaney moved out of the area, and he was not present in the Bay Area for, you know, the winter and the early parts of the spring and so on. And then he would come back to the area using the excuse saying, I'm going on a hunting trip or a fishing trip, but and he could have also had the opportunity at that point to commit the Zodiac murders. So, but like, he was actually just in the process of dealing with his personal life. But if you entertain the multiple killers theory, by all accounts, if you're going to look at the Zodiac hoax theory or the multiple killers theory, the group murder theory, and you want to include Hal Snook, almost certainly you would say that Hal Snook was not working alone and he did not commit all of the murders. And I've even said I've done an upload on Hal Snook as a Zodiac killer suspect. And even in that upload, I would include Dennis Land, who was the park ranger at Lake Berryessa, Hal Snook's quote unquote protege as the stabber at Lake Berryessa, and I cite Thomas Horan and his uh, claims about Dennis Land and all of that. So what I would say is that um, this is something where right now I would just turn it over to you guys and want to know, do you think the changes in the seasons have any significance at all in Zodiac activity? And I'm very much tempted to say that it's almost like it's following the pagan tradition, but I really was... The I wasn't even sure if I should mention that. Simply following, you know, getting closer to the holiday of Samhain. I'm not sure if there's anything there with that. But once again, in conclusion, it's like December 20th, 1968, day before the winter solstice. Then for the, the season of winter, the Zodiac is silent. The Zodiac remains dormant the same way that many things in the winter do. Spring represents the birth of Hal Snook. And in the summer, the Zodiac killer takes a life of his own and is uh, committing these murders. And two months from Hal Snook's birthday, April 21st until September 21st is the summer solstice. Two months from Dennis Land's birthday, August 12th, 19, August 12th to October 11th of 1969. 
So it's like Paul, 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 Paul Stein was murdered October 11th, 1969. Just being clear about that. I mean, it seems like there is, uh, there is this two month pattern and there's almost like an, an intentional, uh, spacing that is going on. If you have anything to say at all and anything you'd like to contribute, please drop a comment below. That's all for me now. If you like this upload, you can hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. And see you on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.